Warning, you are listening to an adult podcast talking about adult topics. You have definitely been warned. All right, buddy. Uh, thanks for listening to the Hoppy Craftsman. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm Nate. I'm back. Uh, we are. It's actually just us today. Brandon is actually running. Uh, yes, actually, half it's marathon? just us. Yes. Half marathon. Yeah, he's running a long way. It's a long way away from here. So we actually took this day instead of running marathons. We decided to. Uh, yeah, we decided to brew some beer and said, yeah, we decided to come over here to the Libby Brew House, brew, brew ourselves a double IPA. We got ourselves a uh, Pliny Clone from Northern Brewer and uh, flagship uh, yeast. From Imperial out of Oregon, and uh, we're gonna have some fun today. So the, the you showed me the yeast earlier. It's actually uh, if people haven't home before, can I explain to you kind of what the difference between you know this one I'm actually new with. It's a it's straight out of Oregon. It's in a little pop can, it's like a little soda can, and you don't you don't heat it up the day you don't let it sit out. You just you store it cold. You throw it cold. So basically, know? it's it's the size, uh, not necessarily of a soda can, but it's actually smaller, yeah, it's about like half a little, little v, size, little V eight kind of style, yeah, small can. can, and uh, yeah, you you pop it open, you let the pressure out, and you chuck it in your you you, you pitch it. In Immediately, you don't hold it. You don't let. You know, a lot of those times, a lot of those other yeast packs, you let it sit out for a while ahead of time. Not in this case, right? And so and it's supposed to be very good. Supposed to, uh, and I mean, a lot of guys are recommending it, so we had to try it. Yeah, it seems pretty cool. So something new, something different. Yeah. Uh, you said we're doing a Pliny clone. Yeah, we're doing a Pliny clone. Northern Brewers Pliny clone because uh, I'm as 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 documented, I'm a hophead. Love it. Love so, hops too. So yeah. I mean, that's why we're the hoppy craftsman, yeah. right? So so we had to do it. We had to try one out. So we got so, it coming up to temperature right now. We got the. Uh, we got it uh, steeping Very and cool. uh, at its Mamarillo so already. We're doing uh, partial. Yep. Right. So it's partial at this point. Uh, it's not. Uh, we're doing extract. Yeah. It's an extract grain, so. kit. It's an extract kit. And partial boil right now. And uh, like I said, we got uh, about twenty five point twenty five ounce of uh, Amarillo in there coming up to temp. So we. So with this kit, you, you bought this kit. Or this kit was given to you, or how? Yeah, you dad it? bought it. My dad bought me this kit because he's a swell guy. Yeah, that's Thanks, nice, dad. Though. Yeah, right. Uh, so. With that, and you said you went and got yeast, did you buy any additional things to add to it? Are you actually modifying the kit at all? Is this pretty much just straight? <laughs> Not this time around. No modifications. I just want to brew it the way it's supposed to be brewed. The only thing that we did that wasn't really in the kit was we went, we didn't go with uh, White Labs yeast. So we went to different we yeast. Went with the, we, we wanted to try that uh, Imperial, some out of Oregon, so we went and did with that. So so what hops are we actually throwing in this bad boy? <laughs> there's Simcoe, there's Centennial, there's Columbus, there's uh, one pack of Amarillo. It's, uh, there's a bunch. I might think I'm forgetting one, but it's there's a ton. Right. I mean, and if ton of Simcoe, if somebody's Simcoe. never been to a brewery or never home brewed, um, open up a bag of like fresh hops, oh, breathe in. is amazing. It's one of the best Take things. A deep breath. It's just, it's awesome. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So we're trying to get to 170 right there. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, so initial boil, we're gonna do the initial boil and then yep. we're actually gonna add some more hops and then actually a hop shot is what you were saying. Yeah. There's two, there's two shots of just resiny hop goo Excellent. to add to this so it's gonna be good so they we'll give right, you a little uh, checking it again little little uh needle squirter type of things yeah, exactly. <laughs> little baster squirter things yeah, i, I want to squirt there. it in my mouth that's oh. what i want to do afterwards just pull it out and lick it <laughs> yeah, see how it exactly. tastes yeah right so, fucking die yeah. uh and then we're also drinking a beer so yeah oh yeah we're also drinking the five pound sledge from uh el segundo and the bottle's all the way over there this, way was over there. Par- this is terrible thinking where's brandon nah He's yeah. probably, we haven't run over there, but I think yeah, he's exactly. already busy. Yeah, we'll talk about it again here. But it's the five pound sledge from El Segundo, a double IPA, and it is just incredible. Gun to brews. So, kind of what our beer, beers. Sorry, what kind of what our plan is is to actually we're going to brew this whole beer and we're going to actually come back and forth and actually talk about what we just did. And, and so, we'll take a couple of breaks. Um, we actually kind of want to check the uh, the beer again at this point. Yeah, we're getting close to check so, that right now. Uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Yeah, we're back. We're still we're still brewing this beer. We're back here with Chris. How's it tasting, buddy? What the, what's the next beer you're drinking right now? So we're drinking uh, Blue Dot from Hair of the Dog at this point. Yep, moved on. To, we've moved on from El Segundo. It was a five pounder sle- five pound sledge hammer, by the way, that we were just drinking. I kept calling it five pound sledge. So yeah, it's close enough. Either way, right? It was really so, good. Yeah, it was okay. it was definitely so. This one's a little more like you said, malty has a more yeah. malty kind of face to it compared to actually being a hoppy. And it says right on on the right on the front, malty hoppy. Tasty, good. Port right, and so Oregon. hair, hair the dog is pretty. I mean, it's a pretty nice brewery from Portland. Uh, I actually visited. Like I said on the last day I was there, kind of one of those last minute. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody told us to go there and check it out, and I'm glad we did. It was really cool. Yeah. This is their winter 2016 release of this beer, so mm-hmm. we actually got it in California, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, both of these beers came from that little. Uh, 
run, beer run to, to California, to Anaheim. So Ooh. yeah, no, this one's good. It's, it's a little heavier on the malt, so it's, it's you know, it's, it's tasty. Ray, I mean, you look at the side, and it's, literally the first thing it says is made with organic Pilsner malt, rye malt, and a combination yeah. of intense hops. So, so they focused on that. They right. wanted to focus on that aspect of the beer. Yeah, so that's, and that's, that's totally fine. I mean, it's a nice beer, different different style, mm-hmm. uh, 7%. Yeah, so, was it? Yep. And we didn't cover that on the uh, the five pound sledge from El Segundo. That was a nine point one alcohol. That was that was a nice hot bomb. Al- alcohol tasty hot bomb. It was very good. Yeah. And now we're uh, right now we're we're about we're about thirty minutes into this boil right now. We're waiting up to get to fifteen minutes from now. We're gonna go in and add an ounce of uh, I believe we're gonna add an ounce, out an ounce of uh, Centennial. Hot dry uh, little uh, pellets, hot pellets there. Um, okay. And then we're going to burn for another 20 minutes, and then we're going to do another hop edition, and then we're going to burn for another 5, 10 minutes, and then we're going to do another edition, and then we do a bunch of flame out hops on this. A ton so, of flame out hops. Like three and a half ounces of hops on the flame out at the end of this boil. Okay. So when you say flame out, explain what that means. Meaning uh, we've come to the end of the 90 minute boil, we've turned off our heat, we've removed it from the heat source, and then at that point we add our hops. Okay. And we can do that for about 10 or 15 minutes just as it cools down, just gets all that nice soaked into that beer, uh, and then we take it from there. And then we start our crash after. Crash meaning the bring it down on the temperature. Right. Because that's what we want to do. We want to get that temp down quickly. But yeah. before we do that, that in this beer, there's a flame out period for a hop addition, and that's about 10, 15 minutes long. Okay. So that's probably what I was going to say is the difference between add it during the boil versus after the yeah. boil. What, it, I mean, and it's all about the, the temperatures you're hitting at with the, the, with the hops being added at that time, the different flavors you're getting pulled out of them. Right. So, I mean, that's the thing is that it's, it's the... The wort is boiling at this point. Yeah. When you put or hops in there at this point, right it's yeah. actually pulling a lot more of the hop resins and yeah. oils out of the hops itself, right. where after the fact, you're, looking, you're not going to get a ton of it. You're going to get some, and it'll actually come down in, in the boil itself, the wort. So. Exactly. And uh, no, we went ahead and added the, uh, and this for just for clarification, we did already add one of those hop shots. Uh, right to this beer, so we've already got that nice resin. And I was eating it. You saw me eating it. Yeah, afterwards. Nate couldn't resist. Oh my he couldn't gosh. resist. He had to taste it. It, it was smelled good. Amazing. It was. Oh my gosh, it was crazy bitter, but it was like just awesome hop <laughs> flavor to it too. You could just tell it was just from like just the end of the just the gunk. It was awesome. So your bio on the uh, Hoppy Craftsman website's true then. Yeah, just... yeah. I like I like I like AP, IPAs. That is all. Yeah, yeah. right. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> As it was written. So no, it's good. It is tasty. So at this point, like I said, what, where are we at with the time here? We've got officially 51 minutes left in this boil. So in about six and a half minutes, we're going to go and we're going to go get that. Um, we're going right, to yeah. get that ounce of Simcoe added, ounce of Centennial, whatever it is added. And then we're going to go for another uh, 25 minutes to another during the boil hop edition. And then once we get to our flame out, we add a bunch of hops. A bunch of hops. And they're going to be dry hopping technically after the fact during we're, fermentation? We're going, to be doing, we're going to be doing two separate dry hoppings after the brewing is done. After this okay. goes, from a, after goes from a first fermenter to a second fermentation, that's when we're doing a dry hop okay. 10 to 14 days before the bottling. So about four, four, about four weeks or so we're looking at for total fermentation Four week time. total on all that, and it's going to be about that long. It's going to be about that long until we either get to kegging or bottling, and then it'll be another two weeks after that. Oh, perfect. So, so once, this, once this boil is finished and once we reach our crash and we get it down to, to, to get to that temperature, we've gonna, got a big bucket here lined with some bags and ice, a ton of ice. We've got a wart chiller we're going to be adding in about 15 minutes before the, bu- the boil is done just to sanitize. And uh, we're going to crash that thing down to about 75 degrees. Perfect. And that's the way to do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, still a lot to do. Still a lot of fun stuff to, uh, coming up. So, yeah, we're going to have to make sure we keep updating along around this, but we're getting close to a next to, to more hops. More hops, man. That's, hops. Way, that's how it works, right? Yeah. So, it's going to be good. All right, guys. We'll see you in a little bit. Yep. Yep, we got a bunch of stuff coming up at the end of this. So much. So it might be a little, a little time between the uh, next time we talk and then yeah. this time. So a lot of important steps coming up. Yeah, gotta gotta be on it. So at twenty minutes left, we're gonna go ahead and do one more hop edition. Five minutes after that, with fifteen minutes left, we're gonna go ahead and do six pounds of the malt extract added. 
Excellent. That's that's the that's the big boy step, and that's also when we add the wort chiller. So I really I really wish we had like some kind of smell of vision or something. Uh, if you guys ever been to a brewery when they're actually yeah. brewing, yeah, this smell that's coming off of that right now is yeah. just phenomenal. Yep, you're in a brewery right now. Yeah, it's if great. You can smell that. That's what it smells like. There's, there's only a few things that I like walk. If I walked into a house, that would really enjoy the smell. Of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is right. one of them. The other one would be bacon. Yep. Walked in the house with bacon. bacon. Yeah, bacon's totally a okay. good sign. It's like, ah, oh, it's really smoky in here. It's bacon. Don't worry about yeah. it, bro. The kind of smell you smell, you know you're around people you like. Yep. These, be, yep, this will do. This is, this is. Because so, it is, amazing. it is a good brew smell right now. So we actually have uh, another beer at this point, so. Yeah, this is one we drank before, but you know what? We need to drink it because we have it. It's a 24K juice from Noble Ale Works that we just picked up in California. Keeping it fresh. Keeping them in the, keeping them in some nice fresh glassware, in my opinion, too. Just a shout out to Phantom Carriage and Smog City for some killer killer tulip glasses by the love way love smoke city dude um but yeah 24k juice just again we're, we're in the we're in the ipa mood we're in the double ipa mood and this is a nice hazy juicy ipa and it is so good double that's ipa sometimes the thing is that you know it's you can't brew a beer and not drink beer right no, no I mean, we've definitely I mean, you probably could but back right now it's not as fun it's definitely not, be as fun. Fun. <laughs> it's not as fun. It's not as fun. I'm sure they're not, you know, where they got the big systems, they're not killing, throwing them back like this, but, you know, it's a... Well, it's homebrew, yeah, right? What homebrew, this is what it's about. Right, we're not, this we're is not, what you're supposed to do. Right, we're not operating, uh, like, heavy equipment. We're not doing yeah. forklifts in your house. We're driving so. after this. Driving anywhere. So, you know, it's, it's a good idea. You drink some beers, enjoy yourself. That's, yep. It's funny, I actually... The first beer I ever brewed... We just brewed it. We actually didn't look. We like basically there wasn't like YouTube around. There wasn't mm-hmm. that kind of shit. So we just brewed a beer. Yep. Did what we thought was right. Didn't work out very well. Yeah. And then afterwards, what I should have done, and then what I did was I actually read books about how to homebrew. Yeah. And and, and that's and we've got Chris. That's killer because right here we have uh, How to Brew by John Palmer and a lot of the guys who do both who do both all grain and extract will recommend this book. So I've never I haven't read that one. I've actually read the. Art of homebrewing and yeah. the joy of homebrewing. The joy. Everybody's got yeah. the joy. Everybody's so. got the joy. This is more of an updated one. Okay. This is really this. Will, this will get into things about like you know, your water quality, right. getting your water tested, the importance of things like that in your brewing. Just a really good one for well, John Palmer. So, and that's the thing is, it's that. funny. So she said that. So if you if you when I read the two books, the first one was basically just kind of like a celebration of homebrewing and the right. history and what it was right. about and you know how you should actually enjoy homebrewing and how it should be a, a fun event. And then the second book was actually more of that kind of stuff. It actually went yeah. into like, you know, I and Irish moss to your water and, and the, right. those kind of things. The importance actually, of the, just what to do to prepare for brewing because anybody who's done brewing before knows it's all in the preparation. Oh, it really is. I mean, so that's, we're cleaning nonstop, you and I right yep. now, just to get stuff ready to go for each next step. And that's it's preparation, it's all man. cleaning. It's right. all it's, it's, cleaning and being ready. Getting things lined up, getting things you know planned out ahead of time. You can't just be like, I'm just going to brew and just do it. Yeah. I mean, unless you do it nonstop. But yeah, get things kind of laid out, get things planned, clean stuff like you said. I mean, you it's, it's important. Plan. You've got to be ready so. to go with your next steps. And uh, yeah, no, it's important. But that's cool. Yeah, John. I mean, uh, I've, I've not read that. Actually, you might have to borrow yeah. that from me at some it's point and read one. that. Yeah, it's a good one. And it's, uh, like I said, it's one I've read and one I just keep around on brew days like today for no particular reason other than just to refer to if something comes up. But yeah, um, like I said, you know, we're drinking this 24K juice while we drink our beer and it's delicious. While we make our beer, rather, while we make another die P- a D- another double IPA. GP. And uh, this, you know, we're going for a much cleaner double IPA. We're going for a Pliny clone. So it's going to be a clean, golden, you know, this, that, right. lot, you know, like I said, clean. Well, I mean, with the Pliny Younger dropping we're drinking, soon. We're drinking a very hazy beer right now. A hazy, very hazy <laughs> double IPA. Yeah, on that the IPA Vermont spectrum. style or whatever. That North, England, Northeast, Northeast whatever that style sti- IPA, what they call England, it. That new, that sweeping up, you know, California. That's what they're doing at every, the, you know. Which is funny is that it, it, it started in the Northeast, right? And then actually skipped the whole center of the country, main evidently. Beer com- main beer company, you know, they're huge right. right now. They've been making beers like that, and I didn't even realize it when I was drinking them. But now it's like, you know, now they're huge. And you got these, all these, you know, monkish, doing all kinds of right. hazy beers. It just skipped the whole middle of the United States yeah. and then went right to the West Coast. And so... That's what California it, does. Well, it's funny, but, well, I, you know, I would, so I would almost... Much, they make so much beer there. They, I mean, they're, so they're just always leading the... Right, but I think the trend, back. I think normally it comes from the West Coast and maybe goes East. Absolutely. And yeah. you don't this, see one it did, east. this one did swap that right went uh, it's a different direction than what it normally goes so mm-hmm. really cool let's see that you know we're yep. at, at this point i'm sure like you said we talked about before california's probably completely over this i mean there's some people that probably love this and they'll probably stick around i think for the hazy is where it's at well, i mean we've we've heard we've listened to other podcasts where they're just done with ipas in general right. so it's not really well it's not what a, you enjoy not even ipas but just hazy ipas they want more clean filtered yeah. ipas like we, we've had yeah i, I think that there's probably a, a segment of the population that wants that, but I think at the same time, I think that 
Arizona is definitely not in that market. We haven't had beers like this no. before, so it's something new to us, and I love it. Yeah, I'd be interested to see which one of the first local breweries does something like this, and it could be there now. Well, I mean, it I, could be there now. When I don't, you know, know, with, I don't know um, every beer that's being made by the by beers. Well, well Wilderness beers made their, their Orange Tango. Yeah, right. that's true. Never that's mind. pretty hazy. Yeah, that's pretty much where it's at right and, there. And then the, the second one I saw thing. was actually from uh, a new brewery that I haven't seen before. God, I can't, I can't remember the name now. It's actually a Tucson brewery. They make monsoon is what we were talking about the other day. Okay. Yeah, I don't P- even know. Pueblo Vida. Pueblo oh, Vida. Pueblo Vida, that's right. Yeah, they're Tucson Brewery. They actually start canning their beers. It's monsoon. It's actually yeah. a big, juicy mm. kind of IPA. I'm sold. Yeah. Right. So sounds, at this point, sounds good. Uh, Brandon, who actually is a native from Tucson, so yeah. next time we go see his parents that is in Tucson, yeah. hopefully he can snag some of that from us. get him to get in some of that. Yeah, bring it to the show. So yeah, no, we've got about a minute left right now, and we're going to go do another hop edition. So we'll, uh, we'll check in again, but we'll be right back after we uh, get this taken care of. minutes or so yeah it went, it went it went awry a little bit there in the end but uh it went it went all right we uh we've got everything in the fermentation we've got it ready with a blow off in the second uh the second bucket there for a uh, blow off valve and uh we're ready to see what happens in the next two weeks I'm excited yep. so uh lessons learned lessons hey, what, 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 what did we learn lessons learned one? we forgot to put the wart chiller in the brew 15 minutes before it was done boiling so we had to go through a pretty intense sanitation sand sanitization that's the word yeah, yeah. on that and um <clears throat> then uh did not get an og yeah, we actually forgot to get an OG, which is not that big of a deal because there's pretty much a standard OG for this pliny extract. It's an extract kit. I mean, this is not a brew. This is not a beer that I invented myself. So we have a right. pretty re- reasonable expectation of where it's going to be at. But it would have been nice to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. But again, not the end of the world. No, it's not. Been it's nice, going to be. It's, we're we're going to take care of it. We're going to see what comes in the next two to four weeks. Uh, in the next one to two weeks, rather, we're going to switch it over to a secondary, which means we're going to rack it with a bit with a uh, with a racking. Uh, I don't know. Cane. Racking, Racking cane. cane. Yeah. We're going to suck it out of there with a tube <laughs> and uh, put it in a second bucket in a second glass carboy. And uh, then we're going to do some dry hop additions until we get to bottling. Very nice. So, so now we're going to take care of it for the next couple of weeks and uh, we'll see what cat hatches from this little egg of love. At that point, maybe uh, bring a Grolliver or something to. Uh, yeah, we're going to be enjoying some. Another show. Yeah, we're going to have to. Yeah, we'll see. We'll definitely do a tasting on the show regardless of how it comes out. <laughs> Either way. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. So. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for enjoying the brew day. We're going to be doing this again soon. Uh, there's a couple other kits I'm pretty interested in from Northern Brewer. They got a New England IPA kit for obviously with the craze. They, they put out one. So awesome. I'm to pick that up. But thanks for listening, guys. All right, guys. Till the next time. I'm Chris. Late. Later.